America's love affair with the V8 engine is something that became a hallmark of American automobiles across the globe. No one doubted the sheer brutish speed that some of America's fastest muscle cars had to offer. But the term American supercar wasn't really something that was uttered in discussion. The closest thing to the new era of mid-engined Italian performance cars that we had here in America was the GT40, and even that was more of a race car than a road-designed supercar. But if there was one thing that you should never ever bet against, it's American ingenuity. And this is the story of two brothers who ended up building one of the fastest cars in the world, the Manta Mirage. Now, many of you may not have even heard of Manta cars in general, and that's okay, because they weren't a household name by any stretch of the imagination. And their story starts out with rather humble beginnings. Manta Cars was a fledgling automotive company founded in America by the Lavette brothers, Brad and Tim, in the early 1970s. This time period is important to understand the automotive landscape because this was when the fiberglass craze was in full force. Countless individuals and small companies sprung up with their own vision for the perfect automobile. And now with the reasonably attractive cost of making fiberglass molds for a car body, the dream of creating your own car was now more achievable than it ever had been before. Car guys turned businessmen were now producing their own bodies to install on a variety of existing chassis so people could take their run-of-the-mill sports cars and turn them into something truly unique. Cars like the Myers Manx Doom Buggy, the Callisons, and even the Victresses are just a few of the many low-production fiberglass options that were available for the enthusiast who wanted something more. Brad Lovett was a gearhead, a Formula Ford racer, and a crew chief for a race team that fielded Lola cars, who knew what a properly set up race car felt like, which gave the Lovett brothers a unique leg up for their master plan, to create a world-beating supercar that could be purchased by your average Joe at the time. Now, this was no small feat, but as you will soon find out, they actually pulled it off, and they called it the Manta Mirage. Brad was also a talented fiberglass artisan who ended up through one way or another having the opportunity to work on making some extra parts for the McLaren M8 Can-Am race car, which if you look at the M8 McLaren side by side with the Manta Mirage, you can clearly see the resemblance. The Manta Mirage visually was heavily inspired by the Savage McLaren Can-Am car. And after making parts for this race-only McLaren, Brad thought, well, why not make something similar as a road-going car? Thus, the Mirage was born. With its extremely angular front featuring some trick pop-up headlights and its super short rear tail section, the design of the Manta Mirage truly made it look unlike anything else on the road at the time. And it was crazy enough looking to do its own marketing just by the way it looked. Now, obviously being two brothers on a budget, they were going to have to get creative with figuring out how to build their very own high-performance monster from a chassis and suspension standpoint. In a stark contrast to many of the other component cars at the time, the first Manta cars would end up using their own custom-designed, race-inspired tube-frame chassis that would act as the backbone that would give their sports car an edge over everybody else. This new two-frame chassis would be designed in a two-seat mid-engine configuration to house a variety of America's best V8 engines longitudinally behind the driver, as these engines were readily available and fairly inexpensive for the power that they could deliver. The idea was that customers would be able to pick the engine that they liked the best for this application, ranging from a 327 small block Chevy to even a torque monster big block from Ford if the customer so desired. This meant that depending on the engine choice, your Mirage could behave and feel very different from others due to the different power bands between these engines. This V8 of the customer's choice was then backed up by a four-speed Chevrolet Corvair transaxle to help put the power down to the rear wheels of the fiberglass-bodied Manta, which would also have featured four-wheel disc brakes as well. In an effort to keep the costs down and to help from an ease of maintenance perspective, the suspension of the Manta Mirage would also use a variety of mass-produced off-the-shelf suspension components, all tied to its new chassis. 
However, with these cars being sold as component cars or kit cars, likely various owners worked to build their own custom suspension setups or would work to retrofit whatever parts they had available to get their car on the road. These initial Manta Mirage kits were available in apparently two forms, a basic kit and a deluxe kit. As you might imagine, the basic kit was the cheapest bare bones kit that required you to figure out your own solutions for the interior upholstery and various other parts of the car, while the deluxe kit would come with the upholstery kit and lots of other smaller parts to help speed up the process of building your Manta Mirage kit. The bodies could be ordered from the factory in a few shades of fiberglass gel coat, all of which helped accentuate the crazy wedge shape of the Mirage. And speaking of speed, not only were these Manta Mirage cars V8 powered, but because of their small size and lightweight fiberglass construction, fully assembled cars would tip the scales at just under 2,000 pounds, which was absolutely crazy. Pair that figure with a 400 horsepower V8 and you have yourself a car that was significantly faster than a modern Hellcat that you could build in your own garage for really not that much money at the time. People will always look down at kit cars, but when the Manta Mirage was faster than other cars like the Pantera, it was pretty hard to dismiss it just as another kit car. The value and style per dollar proposition for the Manta Mirage was absolutely unmatched virtually anywhere else in the world, which helped the Manta sell quite a few Mirages to customers across the United States. Enough sales to even warrant Manta launching a second model called the Montage a few years later, which would be based on a full rear engine Volkswagen floor pan kit, like many other kit cars at the time would be as well. This model was cheaper and easier to build for the average customer, as all the suspension and drivetrain components would be assembled from the donor VW car. All you had to do was drop the body on and do some work to wire it and get everything to fit properly. And for those of you with keen eyes for vintage race cars, then you would also see that the Manta Montage was based off the design of the McLaren M6 GT race car as well. And for customers that wanted something a bit faster and more custom, they could purchase the Manta Montage T, which was another custom tube frame chassis design like the Manta Mirage, only this time it would feature a mid-mounted V6 as its engine of choice, as a sign of the times during the oil crisis in the latter half of the 1970s. But unfortunately, Brad Lovett would never get to see the Montage T and the new montages achieve commercial success because he was tragically killed in a racing accident. His brother, Tim Lovett, would push through this difficult time and would continue to take the reins as the Manta car's owner and operator and successfully operate the business until they finally stopped building cars in 1986, allegedly as a result of a business deal gone south. And what's most impressive about the Manta lineup of cars wasn't just their crazy power to weight ratio, but it's how long they were able to build them for. With many kit car companies, you see them fold only after just a few years, but not Manta. From their initial release of the Mirage in 1974, through their other model releases, it wasn't until 1986 that the original Manta company officially closed their doors. Over this 12-year production run, estimates placed the total production of Manta cars at around 1,000 units. Now, there was no requirement for Manta to keep detailed records of the cars produced, though, because they sold them without an engine. So, under the law, they were not considered a full manufacturer. But with that being said, 1,000 total cars being built is still no easy feat. And today, the Manta Mirage is still a very niche component car that has a strong and loyal following behind it. People are still actually even working on finishing or redoing some of these kits nowadays with more modern suspension parts and drivetrain components, which is truly awesome to see. And I'm sure Brad is looking down with a big smile on his face, seeing the joy that people still get out of their line of fiberglass cars some 40 years later. And that is the story of the Manta Mirage, the home-built American V8 supercar that put the world on notice. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any personal stories around any of the Manta cars. I would love to hear them. 
And thank you all for watching another episode of our Rare Cars documentary series. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.